Inbox Adventure. I've been running this experiment for three years called Adventure Snack. And basically, um, it's interactive fiction via email. And uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the project. We're going to play an Adventure Snack game together. And I'm going to talk about uh, how you can set up your own uh, email interactive fiction newsletter and why you might want to. Um, so uh, yeah, Zarf did a good job introducing me. I'm a narrative designer and game creator from Los Angeles. Um, one of my passions is designing interactive stories in unusual mediums. And I'll give you an example. Um, I don't know if any of y'all had the Tiger 2XL, um, but this is, uh, this is a toy from my childhood. And I designed uh, the first new game for it uh, in 25 years called Facts About the Robot Uprising. Uh, and it's an audio cassette game. And uh, I love just doing weird things like that, taking uh, platforms that people may not think of as game platforms and uh, and making cool games out of them. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So what is email interactive fiction? Um, this is not so much a definition as it is like how I personally think of it, um, which is text games distributed via email, which use hyperlinks to allow the player to interact with the narrative. So um, before this talk, uh, there was a conversation happening in the hallway about uh, play by mail games where uh, somebody uh, like, these are like very old school games where like somebody would like make a choice, almost like playing play by mail chess, but like with the role playing game. Um, where there's like a human on the other side, like giving you a bespoke response to your action. That's not how I think of uh, email interactive fiction, though very cool. Um, I think of it as more automated than that. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about, uh, talk a, a lot about Adventure Snack uh, and tell you what I'm working on. There's another game uh, called Misadventure Adventure, um, which is really cool um, at misadventure.substack.com. And um, whereas Adventure Snack uh, uses hyperlinks to link to branching narratives on WordPress pages, like on a blog, to continue the adventure, Misadventure Adventure um, links out to a form which collects user feedback about how the story should progress in the next uh, in the in the next episode of that uh, newsletter. So that's really cool. And then uh, hopefully uh, I'll be able to show your game uh, as an example uh, in the future. I, I hope this talk inspires you to maybe uh, try your hand at email interactive fiction. Um, so what is Adventure Stack? Well, as I said, uh, it's an experiment I started three years ago. Today, uh, as of today, I've published over 70 games. Um, they're basically bite-sized quests in the style of classic 1980s choose your path game books and text adventures that I send to player inboxes twice a month via email newsletter. So this is the latest one. Um, Bigfoot is your landlord. Um, so uh, if you're signed up to Adventure <coughs> Stack, you would have gotten this on Thursday. And as you can see, there's like two, there's like a header image. There's two paragraphs that uh, lead into the story. And then uh, there is, a, what would you like to do? And then a series of hyperlinks that lead to, as I said, WordPress pages that basically allow you to continue the story uh, and uh, go on those branching paths. And then there's also a section I call table talk that is uh, comments. And I'll talk a little bit more about that too. Um, so yeah, these are some examples of some games I've done. Uh, they're all tend to be humorous. They all tend to be funny. That's my natural uh, writing style. But I also like to experiment with different genres of fantasy, action adventure, horror. Uh, every year I do Christmas games. Um, this was last year's Negotiate for the Elf Union. So this is the game uh, I'd like to play with you today. Uh, it's a short game called Reconcile with Your Mole Man Father. And uh, when prompted, uh, I'll ask you in the Nariscope audience uh, to help make the decisions. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's dive right into an adventure stack. This is uh, one of my favorites. You are an adult mole child. Your sharp claw hands dig a fresh tunnel through the dirt ground, slicing worms in half by the hundreds. Their tortured worm screams ring in your ears as you finally enter the tunnel of crud a mole expressway. The tunnel has many offshoots, 
one of which ends in a small, sparsely furnished cave. There's a seldom used stove, a stone slab bed, and a bookshelf of alternative history about Mole War II. Welcome home, your mole father says with a deep scoff. <laughs> he doesn't look up from his book, Assassinating Mole Cellini. You ask how he knew you were coming. I recognize the vibrations from your irregular digging technique. Afraid to get dirt under your claws? Is that frowned upon in the surface world? It took all of 20 seconds to regret your decision to come back to the tunnels, but your therapist believes you need to have an honest conversation with Grusler, your father, in order to make progress in your sessions. You run your tongue nervously around your big, sharp teeth. Okay, you have zero mole relationship points with your father. The more points you earn, the better this conversation will go. What would you like to say to Grusler? Aren't you happy to see me? It's been 270 years. That's choice one. Choice two, there's something I need to get off my furry chest. Or choice three, are you reading about the greatest mole war in mole history? So one, two, or three. Let's look at the comments. Looks like we've got a strong consensus for three. So let's go right there. Are you reading about the greatest mole war in mole history? You kindly ask. Uh, the second one? That's right, your mole man father replies. Most of these books are about what would have happened if Adolf Diggler won Mole War II, but <laughs> Mole Cellini also could have done things differently. And that's what I'm interested in. Grusler is grateful to speak to literally anyone about this book. You have two mole relationship points. All right, what would you like to say to Grusler next? One, I brought you some freeze dried larvae. Two, I'm doing really well in the surface world, actually. Or three, I can outdig you any day of the week, old man. Let's see what the chat says. Oh, we're getting some different responses here. I think I'm seeing majority. Oh, well, we got a strong influx for, for two. Uh, let's go with two. Uh, I'm doing really well in the surface world, actually. I'm doing really well in the surface world, actually, you defensively reply. I'm a web designer for an auto insurance company. Let me guess, your mole man father replies. None of the who bonds you work with have seen your face, and you worry if they did, they would shriek with fear. Grusler mm -hmm. is infuriatingly right. Ugh, you got zero mole relationship points. All right, this is your last chance. What would you like to say to Grusler? Number one. Why don't you visit my surface world condo? Number two, is that broken stool comfortable for your hunched back? Number three, uh, do you want me to leave? Or number four, will you please look up from your fracking book? All right, chat says, I think we are, I think we're mostly ones here. Um, yeah, maybe some slight one dollar, one dollar. Okay, that's putting it over. We're doing one. Okay, great. I'll always take the funny, uh, funniest comment. Uh, <laughs> why don't you visit my surface world condo? You ask. You can see my tables. I have three of them, you know, all different shapes and sizes of tables. Oh, do who mods love tables? Your mole man father responds. True mole men hate tables. We love eating off dirt, as the great snout intended. Dirt is where all the nutrients are. This only confirms my suspicion that the surface world is terrifyingly dirtless. Grusler's not going to the surface anytime soon. You had zero mole relationship points. So when you add them up, you scored a two total. And so that leads us to this ending. You dug hundreds of miles to come home and your mole man father's treating you like dirt. Worse than dirt, really. He respects dirt. I wanted to try and patch things up between us, you tell him, pointing a sharp claw in his direction. But all you care about are your dumb, fake history books. How about an alternate timeline where you tell me that you love me? Without a dictator, that'd be a lousy book, he shouts back. Shaking your head, you turn around and burrow back into the tunnel of crime. You'll return to the surface world and tell your therapist she is wrong and also an idiot but she promised you a full month of free sessions if the trip was a bust. Yay, therapy's expensive. The ah. end. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what an adventure stack is typically like. Um, so 
Why publish email interactive fiction? Well, as you can see in the top a corner, it is cool. So that's a good reason. Um, another reason is that it is simple to make. Uh, it requires no scripting, no programming, or no, uh, no game engine. Um, it is, I think, perfect for a solo narrative designer showcase. Um, I recently learned how to program uh, in ink, and I think it's really cool, but I had to read like a whole, like a whole book in order to do that. And, uh, you know, with Adventure Snack, I just need to know how to use an email newsletter platform um, and how to post on a blog like WordPress um, blog site. So uh, I, I think a lot easier, um, very easy for somebody who doesn't have those skills. Um, there are email IF is free and inexpensive or, or inexpensive to publish. Um, again, you really need a newsletter platform um, and there are free options and a blogging platform for which there are free options. Um, newsletter cadence encourages shorter development time. So uh, I've definitely like spun my wheels on a game project for a long time. Um, and what Adventure Snack has done really well is sort of get me out of the mindset of perfectionism and put me into the mindset of shipping shipping games faster and more games and getting more stuff out into the world, um, which I think has been really good for me when I work on longer projects because it uh, it helps me budget time a little bit better. Um, you can build community with players. So um, with some uh, email newsletter platforms like, like the one I use, Substack, they offer comment sections, um, which I was talking about a little earlier. Um, and it's really cool for like the players. I can ask them questions. I can ask them for feedback. They can talk to each other and you can sort of build a community within the platform itself. You could also use, um, you know, blogging software. You know, you could also use the blog sites um, like WordPress, uh, open them up, opening up comments and allowing people to talk with that too. So it's like a cool, has like community features sort of built in. Um, it also helps build goodwill for larger projects. Um, so I released my first D and D uh, like adventure last year, and I was super happy with how supportive Adventure Snack players were of it. They they went and they purchased it. Um, but you know, it, it makes sense. Like after two years of like entertaining folks in their inboxes, uh, folks really wanted to give back and, and be supportive of some of my other work, which I thought was really cool. Um, uh, if you want to charge for your uh, interactive fiction, for your email IF, you can do that. Um, a lot of these platforms have built in subscription processing. So, uh, so you can charge a monthly fee for your work, which is really cool, kind of like Patreon. Uh, and finally, um, it's platform independent. So, um, you know, I'm on Twitter. Um, if I left Twitter, and I wanted my Twitter following to follow me, I could tweet like, hey, like follow me on Blim Blam, right? But like how many people would even see that in their newsletter? Like how many people would see that in their feed, right? Probably not that many, um, just because of the way algorithms work. Ah, algae rhythm, damn you. So uh, with newsletters, you can own your audience. So I have a database of all the people I'm contacting with my emails. I could take that and move that to another email platform without losing any followers. So uh, I think that's a really cool uh, aspect of, uh, of email IF. So what's my process like for developing an adventure stack? Um, things that inspire me, um, one is game mechanics. So uh, for Mole Man, I really wanted to work on a game that was more conversationally driven. I was doing a lot of games that were action driven and I was like, Okay, well, what would maybe like a visual novel type conversation system look like uh, with email IF? And so just working backwards from that like idea, um, I was like, oh, okay, let me uh, let me give that a sh let me give that a shot. Um, I'm also inspired by genre tropes, pop culture ephemera, even just like funny titles. Like Bigfoot is your landlord was just like a funny title, and I worked backwards from it. Um, so I'll typically do three drafts. I'll start with a rough pass in Google Docs um, of just like writing writing it out and writing out all the different sections. And if a game is particularly complicated, I might draw a little story map. But because Adventure Stack games are usually pretty short uh, and easy um, to make, I, I don't usually need one, but sometimes I'll do that. 
um, to just to keep track of all the different branching. Um, then I'll do a second pass in the Substack editor and on WordPress. So I'll like put them into those uh, websites and then I'll read them again, uh, make notes and changes. I might change some, I might add options and such. And then I'll do a third pass by sending myself the email and playing through it. And sometimes I'll send uh, my partner, uh, Amanda, who uh, sometimes play tests for me. Thank you, Amanda. So um, my process for creating covers, um, so like those images that you see, um, I'm not an artist, uh, I'm not a graphic designer. Um, I have a program called Affinity Photo, uh, which is $50, um, which compared to the subscription fees you pay for Photoshop uh, is super cheap, but it is comparable in terms of features. Basically, I'll come up with an idea. Um, in the case of Moment Father, I knew I wanted something, wanted an image of him in, in his cave, image of, of Mole Man in the tunnel. And so I'll use stock image sites to find vector drawings, which you can stretch and, into various sizes without losing image quality. And then I'll collage them together, uh, those props, vector drawings together as props, which I edit into a complete image. So for example, uh, on the left, here is the, the final. And on the right, here's what I was working with. So uh, you could see what I did. I cut out that cute little bee, and those flowers, cut out the, the friendly worm, uh, made the tunnels darker, added a bookshelf, gave him a scowl. Uh, and uh, yeah, it took me about an hour um, once I sourced the image to, uh, to put it all together. Uh, some of, uh, I've noticed that a lot of the uh, Nariscope talks have featured cats. So I thought I put in a cat of my own, Garfield, America's favorite fat cat. Um, so my design philosophy, I promise this is related, that joke is related to the content of this slide. Um, so I think of these as micro games, right? So people, um, you know, typically when you're checking your email, it's usually for work. Uh, at least I find that to be the case um, or I'm making plans or something like that. So, uh, so people's time is limited when they're in their inbox. So I like to send um, the interactive fiction equivalent to a comic strip. This is a, a quick hit of adventure. It's a fun, uh, cool thing I can do. Uh, you could play on a lunch break or something like that. Um, I like to make the choices meaningful um, with a, a medium to heavy ludic weight, as they say, um, because there's so few branches uh, and the games are so short. Um, I like to make the choices have more of a narrative impact. So in the Mole Man game, uh, your choices lead you to, like the three endings are, as we saw, uh, you know, Mole Man, Father, and you are not speaking. Um, one, the, the a second ending where there's like a glimmer of hope for your relationship, but it's not quite there yet. And a third where it's like you two have basically reconciled. So that's like a, those are like three pretty wildly different branches in a choice of game. You know, that kind of relationship, you know, could take hours to, to, you know, to play through. Um, uh, you know, when I started Adventure Stack, I used a lot of random choice, dice roll type uh, mechanics, but now I like to consider player emotions and try to give players a personal connection to the story, even if it's funny, um, something relatable, um, something that will maybe help them learn a little something about themselves. Um, if I can do that, uh, I think I've, I've super won the day. Um, I've also learned to keep the emails short. So I've actually done, uh, taken the statistics, the, the click-through statistics that you have in um, the email backend. And I've noticed that when the game prompts, when those like paragraphs that lead into the choices, uh, speeder, they're sometimes called, um, they tend to uh, they tend to get more interaction the shorter they are. So uh, I found a sweet spot of 150, 200 words. When I go longer than that, um, less people click the story link. So um, yeah, time is of the essence um, in an inbox. And also shorter subject lines tend to increase the open rate. Um, I see around around five words is typically what I've uh, what I've found is really good. Um, oh, so this is a little trick. I've learned to offer a little bit more interactivity, URL parameters. So you know those like weird query strings on emails, like in this example of, you know, domain.com women's shoes, and then it's like question mark type equals high heels. Um, I use those 
in Adventure Snack. So what I'll do uh, instead of uh, type equals high heels, I might do a type equals say green key, right? So I'll put that at the end of a URL, a URL. And then I'll use this WordPress plugin called URL params, which can hide or show content depending on the query strings in the email. So um, it may say, I may hide uh, a link that says open door if you don't see type equals green key. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so you can sort of build in that kind of inventory system of interactivity. Um, it's rudimentary, but uh, it really has opened up a lot of doors for uh, what I can do with these uh, with email fiction, email interactive fiction. Um, I won't get into all the nuances and differences between the different newsletter platforms, but uh, here are a couple to choose from. Uh, I'm on Substack. Um, it, another popular alternative to Substack is Ghost. Um, if you have a large following already, like an email list already, um, Ghost is $9 a month, um, but it takes 0% of subscription fees. So if you're charging and you have a big email list already, you will pay less because it's $9 a month, but 0% of subscription fee as opposed to Substack, which is free to use at all tiers. But if you start charging, they take 10% of subscription fees. So over the long haul, you'd spend more money, but in the short term, um, uh, you could you, you use Substack. And then there's other ones too, MailChimp, Review, MailerLite, Beehive. They all have various uh, different bells and whistles. Substack is very uh, simple to use and easy to use, which was important to me, and it's community-minded, uh, but others have really cool uh, bells and whistles and features. Um, so speaking of which, so there are some tools I'd love to experiment with. Um, the main one being uh, email automation and list segmentation. So if you're using a platform like, let's say, MailChimp, you could do a thing where you send an email and it's like, you are on Dinosaur Island. What would you like to do? Hunt dinosaurs or enter the cave? And if you click enter the cave, then the email, pro the email newsletter uh, website automatically emails the player another email that's like, this is your cave adventure. So you could do multiple emails uh, with the same adventure, which is really cool. Um, it could also do list segmentation. So you click that cave link and it puts you on the list for people who clicked cave. And then you could send several emails over the course of weeks separate to the people who chose cave as opposed to the people who say chose to go on a dinosaur hunt. So you could have two, you know, you'd have separate branching paths within the same newsletter for to players could be receiving completely different adventures, which I think is really cool. Substack doesn't offer that, but other platforms do. Um, I also am interested in, in uh, playing more with animated GIFs and audio files, which can be built in, uh, which can be um, built into certain emails and then uh, using simple JavaScript. I've already started doing little experiments with JavaScript, um, but nothing major. Um, one thing I've learned is that you won't reach every player. Um, so what I've learned is that entertainment emails on average have an open rate of 23% and a click-through rate of 2.9%. Um, Adventure Snack averages 40% open rate and a click-through rate of 30%. So it's far more engaging than the average email. Um, and I'm told uh, that 40% is uh, pretty darn good when it comes to email open rates. Um, so yeah, it's like, well, what about those other 60%? Well, um, another thing I've learned is that service games, like mobile games or stuff that's games that um, charge ongoing fees or what have you, have an annual churn rate of 96% within a year. Um, Adventure Snack loses about 5% per year. Um, so I feel like, um, yeah, I'm not getting everybody, but, um, but I feel like it is uh, very engaging when, uh, when compared to other uh, similar, you know, similar uh, ways of, of uh, doing these types of ongoing games. Um, building a player base takes time. Um, the first game was sent to 29 players. Um, my most recent game was sent to uh, over 1,300 players. Um, and that was over the course of years. Um, it's been slow and steady growth. And yeah, as you can see, uh, a Vegas stack is really enhanced with VR. Put on a VR helmet and play a Vegas stack. It, it, it's really cool. Um, but uh, there are many ways to find players. Um, there are events like this one, like IndieCade or Comic-Con. 
media appearances. I've been on podcasts, uh, Twitch. I've done a uh, played Adventure Set Games on Twitch live. Um, social posts, of course, or Discord on Twitter. Uh, I've done cross promotions with other newsletters. Um, Book Funnel is a is a, a really interesting site for authors. I turned one of my adventure stack games into um, into a, a PDF game book that um, people could download, and then basically on Book Funnel, it's like you can enter your email and uh, you get the game book in exchange. So um, that's really cool. Also, Substack has this really powerful recommendation engine um, that has uh, grown my list considerably. Um, basically, when you recommend another Substack, um, it it's it links it in ways that are like super beneficial that lead to a lot of extra subscribers, which is really uh, which is really cool. Um, finally, I would say uh, final advice would be build a queue. Um, I write two to three games ahead uh, to keep on schedule in case I'm going on a break or you know going on vacation or I have an emergency or something like that. Uh, I'll still have a game coming out. Um, and I say find a community of like-minded creators. Um, newsletter game writing can be a lonely solo endeavor. Um, I really enjoy being part of design communities for uh, indie game creators and newsletter authors, which helps for getting advice and venting frustration and for cross-promotion. And uh, tell me, uh, when you start your interactive fiction newsletter, I want to play it. I want to talk about it. I want to promote it. Um, so yeah, uh, if this talk has inspired you to create one of these games, uh, you can reach out to me on uh, Twitter, at Jeffrey Golden. Uh, you can also, uh, if you subscribe to Adventure Stack and then you reply to one of the emails, you can reply with your link and uh, I'd love to see it. Um, thanks so much for playing and I think we are uh, out of time. So I'll uh, hop over into a break room and I'm happy to answer uh, any questions in the breakout room. And thanks so much, everybody.